There have been many wars in the Middle East, but one of them stands out. The Syrian civil war, with the intervention of global superpowers and use of chemical weapons, has been the deadliest conflict in the region since the Iran-Iraq war in the 1980s. The Arab Spring began in 2011, causing the downfall of many authoritarian regimes across the Middle East and North Africa. Syrians at first could not revolt. Although they were in need of freedom, they were not able to demand it because their regime was one of the most tyrannical regimes. At the beginning of February, some timid calls for demonstrations appeared in Aleppo and Damascus, and several dates were said that did not receive sufficient response. On 17th of February, a policeman assaulted one of the traders in ancient Haritha market. This ignited a spontaneous demonstration and gathered, without previous management or planning, the first demonstration in Syria in half a century. Soon, thousands gathered and began to chant famously, the Syrian people are not humiliated. Although the demonstration was not significant compared to what we saw in the following months, it was a huge incident in the eyes of Syrians. For the first time, a large number of them gathered in an angry rally against a symbol of the regime, and for the first time, they talked about humiliation dignity and the people, all of which they do not know because they have lost their sense of themselves for ages and have been robbed of dignity until they forgot that they have the right to live as honorable human beings. In the city of Dara, young boys wrote on the wall, your turn has come doctor, referring to the president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, a trained ophthalmologist. That small incident generated a revolution. A few dozen boys, the oldest of whom were not yet 15, were abruptly taken from their homes one night, detained and subjected to brutal torture. The regime responded to the early protests with bullets, often with snipers positioned on rooftops of tall buildings in many Syrian cities and, at times, using machine guns wielded by security personnel. On 20th March, protesters burned down a Ba'ath Party headquarters and other government buildings. After 8th April, the emphasis in demonstration slogans shifted slowly towards a call to overthrow the Assad government. By 22nd April, protests were taking place in 20 cities, and on 25th April, the Syrian army initiated a series of large-scale deadly military attacks on towns with tanks, infantry carriers, and artillery leading to deaths of hundreds of civilians. By the end of May 2011, a thousand civilians and 150 soldiers and policemen had been killed and thousands detained. The beginning of organized insurgency began with the formation of the Free Syrian Army on 29 July 2011, when a group of defected officers declared the establishment of the first organized oppositional military force. The rebel army aimed to protect protesters and ultimately remove Bashar al-Assad and his government from power. In late 2011, Iran, an important ally of Assad, joined the war. Since then, the Iranian military presence has grown in Syria, along with that of Iranian-trained fighters from countries such as Lebanon, Iraq, and Afghanistan. These forces have been instrumental in supporting the Syrian government. At the same time, the Gulf states began sending money and weapons to the rebels, mainly to counter Iran's growing influence. In 2012, Jabhat al-Nusra, one of the most aggressive and successful rebel forces, was formed. While secular and pro-democratic rebel groups of the revolution, such as the FSA, were focused on ending the decades-long reign of Assad family, al-Nusra Front also sought the unification of Islamist forces in a post-Assad Syria. During mid-2012, Hezbollah, a Lebanese militia with backing from Iran, joined the conflict in support of Assad. On 12 April, both sides, the Syrian government and the rebels of the FSA, entered a UN-mediated ceasefire period. It was a failure with both sides violating it and resulting in several dozen casualties. Around the same time, Syrian Kurdish groups, who had long sought autonomy, unofficially broke away from Assad's rule in the north. 
In April, the Obama administration began to train and equip Syrian rebels. On 21st August, Bashar used chemical weapons in the Uta region of Damascus countryside, leading to thousands of casualties and several hundred dead in the rebel strong. The attack was followed by a military offensive by the government forces into the area. This use of chemical weapons provoked an international condemnation, and the U.S. threatened a direct military strike but later backed down. In 2014, something happened which transformed the war completely. An Al-Qaeda affiliate breaks away from the group over internal disagreements. The group calls itself the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS. Starting on June 5th, ISIS took control of substantial territories in Iraq. In addition to heavy weapons and equipment from the Iraqi army, some of which they brought into Syria. ISIS launched a major offensive, capturing the city of Mosul in Iraq and city of Raqqa in Syria. On June 29, the leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, announced the formation of a caliphate, stretching from Aleppo in Syria to Diyala in Iraq. In September, the U.S. begins bombing ISIS and calls the campaign Operation Inherent Result, and in July, the Pentagon launches its own program to train Syrian rebels. The balance of power finally tipped in Assad's favor in late 2015, when the Russians began their military intervention in Syria. The city of Aleppo became a major focal point of the conflict, with government forces, rebel groups, and Kurdish militias all vying for control. The next year, Donald Trump won the White House and vowed to stay out of Syria. The appearance of Russian air power in Syrian skies was the game changer that allowed Assad to retake the city of Aleppo, knocking the rebels out of their last remaining urban stronghold. In January 2017, a number of rebel factions, including Al Nusra Front, united to form a powerful group, the Hari Rasham. In 2018, the focus of the campaign against ISIS shifted to eastern Syria where a U.S.-backed coalition of Syrian Kurds and Arabs known as the Syrian Democratic Forces or SDF gradually captured key ISIS positions. On December 14, the SDF captured the town of Hajim. Hajim's fall reduced ISIS territory to a few villages along the Euphrates River near the Iraqi border. On December 19, Donald Trump declared that ISIS was defeated and signaled his intention to withdraw all 2,000 U.S. troops supporting the SDF in Syria. But the SDF continued its offensive and in February launched the final siege on ISIS forces in Baghuz, the last holdout. Baghuz fell on March 23, formally ending the ISIS claim to any territory. The Syrian civil war has been a deadly conflict that has lasted for over a decade, causing immense suffering and destruction. The government of Bashar al-Assad has regained control of most of the country. As of now, Idlib is the largest governorate in Syria held by the rebels, Tahrir Rasham to be specific. After being suspended a decade ago, Syria has been readmitted in the Arab League in 2022 and there have been some efforts to restart the political process. However, progress has been slow, and the prospects for a lasting peace remain uncertain.